welcome to Embrace Church. I am not Adam. We have the same hair style, little pigmentation difference in our skin, but we're basically brothers from different mothers. And uh, my name is Carlos, Carlos Whitaker, and I'm so happy to be with you guys. Um, now it's, I mean, it's official family time. I can't count how many times I have been with you guys. And we today are going to be uh, basically ending the series that you guys have been going through, Heart on Fire. And so as I was preparing uh, to close out the series this week, I went back through and I listened to Adam and his messages. And I got a lot out of the message, uh, out of all the messages. But the one thing that I got more than anything is I will never build a campfire with Adam. Um, I will never do that. If you weren't here for the first week, he told a story about starting a fire. And I don't know how much kerosene and gasoline he threw on the fire, uh, but uh, that scared me to death. And hopefully it did you too. Uh, you can pray for him as well. We, we, that first week, talked about what does it mean to start a fire? And it was actually a great illustration, right? It was a great illustration that no matter how much, at least what I got, no matter how much fuel you can kind of pour on it, like you actually have to catch that wood on fire in order for it to stay. How do you start a fire in week one? And then in week two, jumping into how do you keep a fire going? What does that look like in community for you guys to keep the fire going? And today, today we're going to talk about how to, drum roll, enjoy the fire. We want to enjoy the fire. You know, as in Scripture you see that the Holy Spirit is described as flame and fire, we're actually supposed to enjoy the fire. We're supposed to enjoy the Holy Spirit. We're supposed to savor Holy Spirit. You're actually supposed to enjoy your intimate relationship with the fire of God in your life. And obviously, we know that fire is something, uh, as humans, that we enjoy. Now, you guys up here in this part of the country, you need fire. Because I've been invited to speak here in January before. And let me tell you, in Nashville, Tennessee, where I'm from, we act like we need fire. But we really don't need fire like you guys need fire. And you guys understand what it really means to enjoy a fire a lot different than people in different parts of the country know what it means like to enjoy a fire. We have a romantic relationship with fire. I mean, you can go on YouTube and you can, you can YouTube fireplace and there's like four hours of streaming video that you can put on your TV of just the fire and it crackling. My wife loves winter and loves fire so much that for her birthday this last July, she decided to have a birthday party themed Christmas in July. So she turned the air conditioning down in our home to 57 degrees. She invited all of her friends to come over and wear Christmas sweaters. And then she sent me to every store in Nashville, Tennessee, looking for Duraflame logs in July. Let me tell you, they don't exist in July. But I finally found a box at Home Depot and we went in there, and I started the fire in July. It was 98 degrees outside. And I don't care how low you pump your air conditioning. It took about 15 minutes before our, our house was miserable. And we, we, we had hot chocolate, and my friends were in there with their, with their sweaters, and we were sweating, and we were miserable, but we were going to enjoy the fire. That was like the goal. My wife really wanted to enjoy the fire. There's different ways that we enjoy the fire. People love to enjoy the fire. Any s'mores fans in here? You love to enjoy fire with s'mores. Oh, yeah. Have you ever put, instead of chocolate, Nutella on your s'mores? Game changer. Will change your life. You can enjoy the fire that way. What are other ways? We love to enjoy the fire with a book. We open up a book next to a fire. You, you love to read a book by fires. Yes, I saw you nodding. That's you. Yeah, we, we love to do that. You guys know you love to maybe get a little romantic around a fire. 
Nobody? Okay. Okay, there we go. Thank you, ma'am. Husband, light the fire, okay? Listen, we are supposed to enjoy the fire. We're supposed to enjoy the Holy Spirit. But he, here comes the truth, and this is, th this is a scripture that I want to say hang on to today because I believe that this is going to be the basis on what it, what it looks like to enjoy the fire. John 10.10, 10, it says this, A thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it in abundance. Two parts here. There is something we have to understand. That there is a thief that comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Now, those aren't cute words. Those aren't a little devil with horns and a pitchfork kind of words. Okay? It says that the enemy is here to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So if we're to enjoy our fire, first and foremost, we have to understand that there is somebody that is, is wanting to control us and to put out the fire. And when I say put out the fire, I want us to, again, sit with these words, steal, kill, and destroy. We understand what that means, how devastating the enemy is. We have to understand that we're swimming in warfare. We are swimming in this reality that there's something against us. But oh, here comes the second part of the verse. It says this, I have come that they may have life. It could have stopped there, but it didn't. My favorite part, I may have come that they may have life and have it in abundance. Abundance, not just that we're going to have life. Now, so many of us, we would just be happy with life. Man, if, if, the, if the enemy and the thief could just stop stealing, killing, and destroying in my life, at least I could just live. But that's not all God wants for you. God doesn't want you to just live without warfare. He doesn't want you to just live comfortably. He wants you to have life and have it in abundance. Abundance. That is what he wants for you. And that's how you can enjoy the fire. Listen, this is what abundance means. We have the definition in the next slide. It says this. Abundance is an extremely plentiful or oversufficient quantity or supply. This is that extra to life. This is what we get when we enjoy the fire. Abundance, overflowing fullness, having an abundance of the heart. That is what we get when we enjoy the fire. That is what we get. I can think of no greater example for me in my life of what this looks like. What, what really the last verse looks like, John 10.10, 10, then this truth. I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia as a child. Now, half my childhood was in East L.A. where I was born, but the rest of it was in Atlanta. And so from first grade on till seventh grade, my parents purchased Atlanta Falcons season tickets. You know where I'm going. I grew up an Atlanta Falcon fan. Everything in me is Falcons. You cut me, I bleed black and red. I'm a Falcon fan. And can I tell you that the first half of the Super Bowl was abundance. It was abundance for me. 28 to 3. We went into halftime. I have never, besides the birth of my children, felt as joyful as I felt those first 30 minutes. And then Tom Brady stole, killed, and destroyed. And I have never felt the agony that I felt. I'm telling you guys, you, know, you experienced it with me. I, I, there's probably not a Patriots fan in here. Maybe. But listen, the devastation and the utter loss, th there it is. There's abundance and then there's not abundance. And for me, I'll tell you what, that was like the tale of this scripture in a funny way for me. That th it is that true. We are living life and life can be full of abundance and joy and then whoosh, it just swings the other way. And that's just life. But even in the midst of the highs and the lows and the highs and the lows, guess what? 
we can enjoy the fire and have abundance. That is what God wants for us. So in order to do that, this is what we're going to do. To enjoy a fire, you must be near the fire. To enjoy a fire, you must be near the fire. What does it look like for us to be near the fire? Well, in 2 Corinthians 13, 13, it says this. I love the way that this letter is summed up. It says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. You see that? It says the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. So in order for us to literally enjoy the fire, we've got to be near the fire. And when you're near the fire, at that point you're having fellowship with the fire. What does it look like for us to fellowship with the Holy Spirit? Of course, it looks like spending time in the Word. Yes, Absolutely agree. We've got to do that. We've got to spend time in the Word. We've got to focus. We've got to pray. We've got to do those things. But I also believe that fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit and being near the fire looks different. You see, God has placed desires inside of each and every one of your hearts. And when I say desires, those things that fill you up. I mean, what are those things? For some of you guys, that's going to be the outdoors and wilderness. Can I just by a show of hands, how many people feel close to God when they're in the outdoors, in the wilderness, in a deer stand, whatever it may be? Yeah. Like, like you just, you feel a connection. So there is a desire. So my, my challenge to you is to do that more. When you do those things more that God has placed inside of your heart, when you do those things more, you're going to fellowship with the Holy Spirit and you're going to be near the fire when you're doing those things, some of you guys, it's, for some of you guys, it's running. I, I don't know what's wrong with you, but, but I've met people that they say all the time, I just love to run. And they do, they just run. Nobody's chasing them. They're just running. And they say, I connect with God so well when I'm running. That's a desire. Run more. Run for me. Run. For, some, for, for my wife, it's hosting parties and cooking. She loves to do those things. That's a desire that the Lord has placed inside of her heart. And so she, she loves it. When she's in the kitchen, she says she feels the closest to the Lord. But we have to be careful not to let these desires turn into something a little bit more sinister. And that's where, again, this, this thief is going to come in and try to steal those things. So when you realize that you're maybe out fly fishing because you love the outdoors, but suddenly you're fly fishing because you don't want to be at home with the family? You see when a desire can shift? When you're out running because you don't want to face your life, you see when a desire can shift? And so we have to be careful with these desires that God has placed inside of our hearts, but those are the spaces that I want to challenge you guys this week to go run to and to go, to go sit in. And when you're there, when you're near the fire, that is when you're going to enjoy it. So, to enjoy a fire, you must be near the fire. I want you guys to do something else. Once you start getting to the place and the space where you're enjoying the fire, now it's time to share the fire. What does it look like for us to share the fire? Because we don't want to just keep it to ourselves. We've got to share the fire. You've got to pass it on. Uh, for me, again, a great example is I'm, I'm a city kid from East L.A., and I grew up in, in East L.A. and in downtown Atlanta. And when I moved to Nashville, Tennessee, like the outdoors were not a thing for me. Like the outdoors was, you know, I mean, walking from my, my, my home to my car and then getting out of my car and going into another building. But when I moved to Nashville, one of my buddies was like, hey, man, like, I, you know, I, I'd love to take you, I'd love to take you fly fishing. And I was like, every time I see like an old guy fly fishing, they're just standing Waist deep in a river like this. That, that, that does not look exciting to me. Well, of course, you guys know my personality. The first time I'm in a river and my little dry fly is floating and I see that trout come up and grab it, I have bought more fly fishing gear in the last year than, than my wife ever wanted me to. I'm all in now. I found the tailwaters near Nashville. I go in the mornings at 5.30 in the morning before my meeting at 10 a.m. I'm in the water all the time, and I feel connected to God. 
because somebody shared their fire with me. I never would have known that I was a redneck. <laughs> like, who knew? My friends now in Nashville are like, I fly fish and I hunt. I hunt. They call me the Red Mexican. That's like my name. <laughs> but I did not know that I would love the outdoors so much. And now it's all I want to do. Every time I come speak here and it's, it's getting into deer season, I'm like, Adam, can you hook me up with someone that has some property that I can go get me a buck? It's like what I want to do in South Dakota now. But somebody shared the fire with me. What does it look like for you guys to share the fire, to share that God-given desire that somebody's given you with somebody else? You're going you're gonna to see that it's going to absolutely transform somebody's life. Well, the way that we do it, I think, out, when you share the fire, you've got to capture it first. Okay? So in order to share a fire, you must capture the fire. So this is how I'm going to tell you guys to capture the fire. This is it. There was a great example. Last week, my, my family and I were camping in the high Sierras in California. And we were camping and it was a beautiful, uh, beautiful evening out. The, the stars were out. The kids were in the tent. They were going to sleep. My wife and I were sitting by the campfire. And my wife was like, hey, can you take a picture of the campfire in the tent and the stars? And I was like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, I can. So, so I took a picture. And this was a picture that I took. Now, th there it is. You see the tents kind of, and you barely see, like, like the fire to the right. And I, I looked at the camera, and I was like, something's wrong. Like, you can't see everything. So I pulled out my phone and I YouTube, like, how can I, how can I capture, like, the stars and everything? And it told me, you actually have to leave the shutter open for at least 30 seconds. So I tried, and I did it, and, like, everything was blurry, and it wasn't working. And then I, I, I watched another thing, and it said, you've got to put it on a tripod. So the camera is still. And when the camera is still and the shutter is wide open, all the light enters and hits the sensor. I was like, okay. So I put it on a tripod. I got a little remote. I opened the shutter for 30 seconds. And this was the picture that I got next. And just like that, when I was still and I let the light in, that's what I got. And just like that, guys, I understood what it takes to capture the fire. We have to be still, slow down, and let the light in. And when you do that, this is the result. You can finally see all of the glory that was around me because I stopped, stood still, and let the light in. Guys, there, there cannot be a more perfect example of how we need to let the light in in our lives and to capture the fire in our lives. Be still and let the light in. Be still and let the light in. And this really will be the result in your life as well. You see, I think, I know, because my life is right with you. Now, there's a lot of us in here. And this is something that I, I, I feel like many times I'll touch on. Because I think it's so important. We live in a day and age where we're moving so fast. We're moving so fast. We have access to information 24-7. That we're not experiencing this in our life. We're not. We're experiencing the first picture. And we think the first picture is good enough because we can see a little. You can see two stars in that first picture. But when we slow down, that's when we can capture, truly capture the fire. So what, what, what is that going to look like for you guys this week? What are some ways you can be still and let the light in? It's going to look different. For some of you guys, it's going to look like that in the morning. For some of you guys, it's going to look like that in the evening, but for all of us, maybe midday, but for all of us, there's going to be a time this week where you can stop and let the light in. So we are here and we're going to ask Jesus.
We're going to invite Jesus to show us how this week we can enjoy the fire. Let's enjoy it this week. Let's pray. Lord, there's many of us that have, we've started our fire. We've kept it going. And it's been so much work, we feel like. But it's time that we enjoy you. It's time that we truly enjoy everything about who you are. We enjoy your spirit. We enjoy your fellowship. We enjoy the teachings and the lessons that you're going to give to us. And so this week, I just ask that every single person here find some time to enjoy you. And Lord, once we begin to enjoy you, may we show others that joy as well. We thank you for it is in the name of Jesus we all said amen. Amen.